my history of coming to know the Lord, I was um, brought up in a, a family that did not know the Lord, although we went to church. Um, it was just it was just tradition. And we had a Bible in the house, but it was never read or discussed. Um, you know, there was just nothing about the Lord in our house. But we went, um, when I was very small, we went um, on Sundays. And then um, as I got older, uh, later in life, we went on Christmas and Easter. But I enjoyed church when I did go, um, when I was a small child. And I actually grabbed that Bible and I brought it into my room. It was enormous. Um, and it had like a really big section in the middle with co beautiful color photos from all of the different Bible stories and a, a lot of pictures of Jesus. And I used to just flip through those pictures and look at them. And I, I, I had a love for Jesus, but I didn't really know who he was. And I think I sensed who he was, but... There was no direction. And then also, um, growing up in my family was challenging because my father was an alcoholic and he would say horrible things uh, to us when he was drunk and, and nothing when he was sober. And my mother herself was trying to survive him and she wasn't able to protect us or teach us how to deal with what was happening. So. I found comfort in those pictures, even though I didn't really understand what they were about. Um, when I turned uh, 12, a series of things happened. Uh, the first is that <clears throat> rather than coming with us to church, my mother would drop us off at the front door and pick us up an hour later. And um, being the little food addict that I was, I went in the front door and out the back and took my quarter for the uh, offering to the penny candy store. <laughs> then came back in the back door and out the front door when she picked us up. Um, and also at that time, across the street from our house, a minister and his family moved in and they held a VBS. And it was the first time they ever heard the salvation message. And I gave my heart to the Lord. I, I think I was about 12 years old. But there, unfortunately, there was no follow-up. And my growth as a Christian stopped right there. And um, at this time, my food addiction took off and, and took all of my attention. Uh, my father had a friend who had a farm, and he would get a dump, a literal huge dump truck full of every kind of processed junk food that you could think of that was approaching the date um, that they could sell it. And he would come to our house first and we'd be climbing up a ladder and into the back of the dump truck and throwing over all of these, you know, Lay's products and Sarah Lee's and Thomas's and, and uh, we just filled my entire house with this, every cabinet, a freezer, everything. And at, at, up to that point, my mother had controlled what I ate, but she went back to work and I had full access. And I ate a lot to deal with um, the anxiety that comes from not knowing what was going to happen around me at any given time and not have anyone to teach me how to deal with my feelings. So I would eat to numb them. And I had this memory of um, sneaking food up into my closet and hiding in my closet and, you know, like cramming it into my mouth and it's dripping down my face and my hands like shaking and I'm just cramming it as fast as I can. Um, and of course it, it didn't work, but it was all I had. And I guess I pat myself on the back for being able to survive. And while my eating took off at that time, from my earliest memories, I remember longing for food. I would even say lusting after food. And um, I, I remember looking up at a countertop. I was so small at food and trying to figure out how to get it. And I would steal it and um, hide and eat it. And... Um, 
then um, I discovered at the age of 13 alcohol and drugs and I like from zero to 100 miles an hour in about three seconds flat because I realized it was a quicker way to get relief from my anxiety and I I I drank hard and I took a lot of drugs and almost OD'd a couple of times. It was really bad. And um, I won't go into that history, but when I did finally give those things up, my initial addiction just took off again, which was the food. And my weight skyrocketed to numbers I had never seen in my life. And um, I remember one time, it, over a three month period, I gained 50 pounds. And I remember somebody seeing me and just their mouth dropping, and they couldn't even control themselves. You're know, like, What has happened to you? It was just so humiliating, and I couldn't stop. And it was the beginning of decades of diets and different 12 step groups trying to deal with what I thought was a weight problem. (laughs) But in reality, I I didn't know how to deal with my feelings and I was stuffing them down. That was my number one coping mechanism. And I also didn't have a God. That was what I was running to rather than, you know, our wonderful heavenly father. And so um, in 1995, my husband and I were invited to church um, by some friends and we ended up getting saved and I, I got, well, I got, I say I got saved again and it actually took me a few weeks to realize, wait a minute, I said this prayer before and I'm convinced that the only reason I'm alive today is because I, I prayed and he started protecting me and hedging me in and not, in a lot, not allowing me to um, self-destruct um, in my earlier years. So once I became a Christian, now this began my years of trying to get abstinent for the Lord. And I was in um, both secular and Christian groups. And um, I actually wrote about this today in my scripture thoughts and prayers share. So I think I'm just going to read part of what I read uh, or what I wrote Um, I would pray read God's word meditate upon it and try to figure out how he wanted me to live I knew he didn't want me overeating so I joined many different recovery programs and set out to work tools and steps with all my heart filling my time with meetings reading literature and making outreach calls etc And all these attempts to do what I thought he wanted me to do eventually led to failure because it was me coming up with a solution and trying to power it in my own strength. And I was was perplexed because I thought I was doing everything right. And I was sincere in my prayers. And um, I've come to realize that the Lord, he wasn't going to bless me with abstinence until I had the order right. It wasn't supposed to be me in the driver's seat trying to figure out what God wanted me to do and then working tools and steps like crazy trying to do it, always leading to failure. And at this, recently, the Lord has shown me that um, I thought the decision whether to overeat or not was mine to make. I didn't think he really cared about it. It was it was like whether I would pick a blue shirt or a green shirt. And um, just recently, he's sh- shown me it's not my decision to make. He already made it. And that um, turning to food instead of him is idolatry. And he took it out of my hands and placed it alongside all the other things that aren't my decision to make, like stealing and adultery and murder and all of that. And I'll tell you, that has, that has just, like, changed everything. But as a matter of fact, the Lord has rewritten everything I ever thought about recovery since I started um, Bible for Food. And so what I do now, um, I'll say, I'll, I'll just share that um, I had been abstinent. I would, 
in these other programs, even the Christian programs, there's some nice Christian programs out there, but um, I just, I just wasn't getting it. And when doing these programs, I would, like I said, do, do everything um, like crazy trying to get it. Oh gosh, I just lost the point I was going to make. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me look at my notes. That's what I get for not following my notes. Well, you know what? I'll move on and hopefully it'll come to me. And if not, then I didn't need to say it. So um, what I do now. Oh, it's coming to me. <laughs> and... Um, in these other programs, I would get periods of time. The last time I, I had a couple of years and then have breaks. And those breaks, they were brutal. I don't, I don't just overeat a little. I binge and binge and binge and can't stop. And um, in all the decades, I started recovery in 1989. And in all those decades, and I'm, I'm, uh, 62 now, I was in my 30s or late 20s back then. <laughs> in all of those years, I have never had a break and been able to stop. It's always been a um, at least one to two years before I could stop in a 50-pound weight gain. But this time was very different, and I, I believe it's because the Lord knew that I was ready to get off the driver's seat and let him get in it and um he led me to bible for food so now i'm at what i do now i have a solid clearly defined food plan i write down my three tasty healthy beautiful way to measure meals i commit them to my sponsor and then i eat only that food no matter what and i do bible immersion i think all that pat said in the beginning is what i'm doing and the the, the interesting thing to me is that I was doing a lot of these things for, before, but there's been just a small tweak from what I was already doing. And um, it makes me think of a rudder on a ship. If you, you just turn that thing just a teeny tiny bit and you start off in um, New York and start heading for Europe by turning it a teeny tiny bit, you and way down somewhere in South Africa, you know? And and that is like the difference between what I was doing before and what I'm doing now is profound, even though it was just a small tweak, and I'll explain what that was. Now I pray, like I pour my heart out, what's on my mind, what I'm struggling with, and I ask God to speak to me through his word, and it's amazing that he does that each day. Um, I, I, I don't believe that there's been a day that's gone by that he hasn't either spoken to me about something that he wants me to do or um, confirmed something that he already told me to do. And uh, I, I don't have to figure it out myself. He, he speaks through it, that there's that saying that the Bible is the language God speaks. And if you want to hear from him, you need to be in it. And, and he really does. It's amazing. And um, where he guides, he provides, as the saying goes. So I get direction each day. Then I don't have to run out and try and do it myself. He, when he gives the direction, he gives the strength to carry it out. And I can rest in all of his many great, incredible promises in his word for every area of my life, including food addiction, as long as I keep myself firmly rooted in him and in his word. And as long as I receive his direction and follow that up with immediate obedience. So I, I no longer have to live the rest of my life mastered by sin because where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. I just need to stay tucked into him on a daily basis. So um, today I take a planner. I put everything I need to be doing in order to be walking with the Lord and living that godly life. I put that in first. The prayer, reading the word, writing down what he said, 
and praying my commitment to obey back to him, sharing my scripture thoughts and prayer writing with the um, Bible for Food Google group, doing scripture memory with those verses that he's speaking to me. I write down the days I call my sponsor, days when I speak with my shepherd, days I speak to the person I'm shepherding, days I'll attend and share at meetings, when I, uh, the days I'm going to listen to recordings, when I'm going to do outreach, and I put in when I'm going to church, when I'm going to be serving the Lord. And after that, then I can start entering other things that, um, you know, my responsibilities at home or fun things to go out and do. But the first things first, and you always have time for what you put first, as the saying goes. And when I live this way, the discipline around my food moves out to the rest of my life. And, I, I, and I've had this pattern before with abstinence where I find myself able to do more and more. And there's a temptation to let that cry, crowd out what got me abstinence. But um, there's no place for slacking off. Uh, when I start thinking that I can... What was that? It's seven minutes left. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. When I start thinking that I can um, let things go and not work as hard as I did on day one, it makes about as much sense as going outside in a rainstorm with an umbrella and thinking, wow, I'm not getting wet. I guess I don't need this umbrella. <laughs> I need to live this way. This abs I have a clean, clear, and committed, solid abstinence. Um, now that is only because I'm just tucked right in there with the Lord. And um, like I said earlier, the Lord has just rewritten everything I've ever learned about recovery through his word. And I thought that I would share some of those scriptures in these last minutes. I'm just going to read them uh, or not a uh, few highlights from them. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. I'm to strip off every weight that slows me down and the sin that so easily trips me up and to run the race with endurance with my eyes on Jesus. Romans six twelve tells me not to let sin control the way I live and not to give in to sinful desires. Galatians 5, 1 tells me it is for freedom that Christ has set me free. I'm to stand firm and not let myself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Jeremiah 2.13, for my people have done two evil things. They have abandoned me, the fountain of living water, and they have dug for themselves cracked cisterns that can hold no water at all. Jonah 1.8 tells me those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. Joshua 1.8, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Philippians 2.13 tells me that God is working in me, giving me both the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Philippians 4.13 tells me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 2 Peter 1.3 tells me that God has given me everything I need for living a godly life. And then Psalm 40, I, I love, it's one of my favorite scriptures. And it's just a good description of what the Lord has done for me. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire, he set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Oh, the joys of those who trust in the Lord. So he calls me to it and gives me the strength that I, I, I need to do it. He's done it. He's plucked me out of the muck and mire. Now it's my job to not jump back in. And um, I wanted to just share um, the numbers just because that always encouraged me. I have a 50-pound weight gain, uh, weight loss, not a weight gain. And um, since that horrible 36-hour epic binge that I did, 
back in May, um, I, I'm just about at six months of abstinence. The 25th will be six months. So that's it. Thanks for letting me share. <laughs>